Hi again. After learning about lines of best fit, everybody was like, is there a more precise way? Is there a way to get more accurate data? And today is the day we answer that question. So by the end of this video, you should be able to do these lines of best fit, which is called linear regression, using Desmos and TI technology. So you will need both a TI graphing calculator um, and Desmos for this video. So make sure you have those accessible with whatever you're using. We're going to look at the exact same problem from the line of best fit video and analyze average college room and board tuition and fees um, as it increases over time. Okay, but this time we are going to use first Desmos and then a calculator to kind of get that line of best fit that we got before. Okay, I'm going to start with Desmos here. So the first thing we're going to do is enter our data as a table. Um, so here's Desmos. I just made that a size we can see. To enter a table, you're going to go to this add item and you're going to hit table. Okay, so entering this table is just like you're entering any other table or you're writing one down. So in the X column, I'm going to put zero, then we go five, 10, 15, 20. This is the easy part, 25, 30 to 35. Okay, what I want you to do right now on your own Desmos, because you have that open, is to enter the Y column. I'm going to pause the video to save some time. Okay. So, I got that all entered. Make sure yours matches mine. And as you notice, there's nothing that pops up on this coordinate plane. Why do you think that is? Hopefully, you're thinking in your head that the domain and range don't make sense for the data we have. So, I'm going to go to graph settings to actually fix that instead of just zooming out a bunch of times. So, I can be a little bit more strategic here. So, for my x values, I start at 0 and go to 25. So, I want to just see those, those values. So, maybe I'll say my x values are going to be 0 to, I'm going to say 30 so I can see more than I need, okay? So what I did is I adjusted my domain for my graph. My Y values start at 29 or 2,918 and go all the way up to 23,000, yada, yada, yada. So I'm going to do 2,500, and you can be flexible with that, and I'm going to go up to 24,000, okay? Then you should be able to see all of your values. Um, so if I squeeze up here, you can see everything that's going on. Let me zoom out a little bit. Cool. Okay, now that I can see my graph, um, this should look very similar to what you did yesterday, except now it's going to be a lot more accurate. Instead of kind of guesstimating where it is, that's actually at 25,15,505, which is kind of cool. Okay, so once I entered my data as a table, you are going to now sketch your line of best fit. But since we're using technology, we don't have to estimate it. We can get an exact. And this is what you're going to do. So step two says enter your regression model. Make sure your variables are defined consistently with your table. This is important. So going back to my table over here, my X is called X1 and my Y is called Y1. And you want to define your function the same way, okay, your regression model. Now, what type of model you're going to use depends on what kind of data this is. So right now, all we've really studied is linear regression. This data is pretty linear, so our model is going to be linear. You could do this with quadratic or exponential, but for now, we're using linear. So linear functions look like this, y equals mx plus b. Okay. However, our x is called x1 here, so we're going to just call that x1. And our y is called y1, so we're going to call that y1, so it matches our table. Okay, now you may be noticing these yellow signs that say, wait, there's an error, and there's a reason. It's because our equation, or I should say our data, didn't exactly match a line. So instead of using an equal sign, Desmos uses this little curly, curly sign here. Okay, and again, that's because it, our data wasn't exactly a line. It wasn't exactly equal. Um, so that's how Desmos has decided to define that as regression. So anytime you use regression, you're going to use this symbol. Now, somebody asked, does it always have to be linear regression? No, it doesn't. I could do quadratic regression and do y, my symbol, is a um, standard form of quadratic, which is ax, I should do ax1 squared, too much here, plus bx one plus C, and this should be Y1, and it would fit a parabola to my data, okay? But we're focusing on linear regression right now, so we're just going to go with our linear equation here. So before we go on, you may want to write what that regression model is going to look like, um, so you have some notes on that. So it's Y, 
little curly sign. Um, you're always going to have m, x plus b, except make sure you define the variables how your table is defined. So either y1, could be y2, whatever it is. Just make it match. And the reason we don't fill in an m and a b is because we're trying to figure out what the m and the b are, right? We want to know what this line's equation actually is. And unlike our calculations yesterday, Desmos just gives you the information you need. Okay, so if you take a look here, it tells us our M is 654.8 and our B is 1,282. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. That is an accurate depiction of what we see here, whereas yesterday it was just estimating. Okay, so our slope is 654.8. 654.8, okay, times x, and again, that's x1, y1, plus our b, let me go back real quick, is 1,282. So yesterday, we used our b as 2,918, which is clearly off from what the actual line is. Okay, so right now, what I want you to do is think about that. Why would our y-intercept be different than this data point here? We know a y-intercept is where x is zero, but this is not the same point. So for linear regression, why might it be different than your actual data point? Or which one's a better estimate? Okay, think about those. You can talk about it in the discussion board or come to class with some ideas. Okay, now yesterday we calculated our own slope, which if you remember back, or in the last video at least, it was 10.5, which was actually 10,500 over 20. That was what we calculated. And let's see how accurate we are. And we can do that by dividing these or simplifying this. So from that, you get 525 if you divide those. So we were a little bit off with our estimation, but we weren't too far away in the grand scheme of things. Okay. Now, obviously, technology is more accurate. Yesterday, we were making a lot of like close guesses. Okay. So this is for sure going to be a better estimation tool, but it's also good to practice things by hand and get better at our estimation skills. Okay. So with that said, you can use this equation for very similar things um, you did when you did things by hand. Now it's just more accurate. The other way you can do this is you can find an equation using a TI graphing calculator. So here I have instructions for the TI-83 and the TI-84. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of that, but you can really read through the instructions to figure it out on your own. Everything you're going to need is in the stat button because really linear regression is a statistics topic. Okay, so you have three different categories. We'll pretty much use these two. If you want to insert data, you're going to edit. If you want to use the data, you're going to calculate, which makes sense. Okay. Now, I've already entered some data. This is not the data from this data set I gave you. I'm just doing a random example so you can try the actual data on your own. So my data is entered, but if you wanted to enter data, you would just hit the number you want and then hit enter, so on and so forth. Make sure that for every X value, there is a Y value. So remember, my X's are in L1, my Y's are in L2. I'm going to quit out of that. Now if I want to use the data, I'm going to need to calculate. And okay, ours is linear regression. That's what this stands for. You can also do quadratic, cubic, quartic, so on and so forth. So I'm going to hit my linear regression button. If you have a TEI 84, it's going to show up with a screen that's different than this, and it's going to be easier. All you're going to have to do is hit enter a bunch of times, and it's going to do the work for you. But if you have a calculator like mine, you're going to need to do some extra work and actually define your variables. So the L1 and L2 are my X and Y. They're yellow above the 1 and 2 buttons. So I'm going to tell my calculator X's are L1, and my Y's are L2. So I'm going to write this like a coordinate pair. So it's like X comma Y. You're defining your variables. Okay, so once you define your variables, then you can actually compute the linear regression. And again, it gives you AX plus B, but your A is 6.6, .6, so that's your slope, and your B is negative 1.8. And I know that it's normally MX plus B. Your graphing calculator just likes alphabet, so they use A instead of M. Um, but it's going to give you the linear regression equation for you. Again, that's in the stat button. Oops, stat button. Edit, you enter over you calculate. You can go through these directions in more detail to try on your own getting the same equation that we got before but using the calculator. Okay, again, you can use this on standardized tests and regular tests, okay, but you cannot use Desmos. 
There's only one thing we haven't talked about in this video, and there's some extra steps on here that tell you how to get this step here, that R squared and that R, okay? I'm not going to go through all these steps. I want you to read through them and see if you can figure out how to get that R, doing a little investigation on your own. I know we don't necessarily know what the R means, but I have written a blurb here where you can read about it. And I want you to come back with an understanding of what that means. You can do extra research on Google if necessary. Otherwise, that's linear regression, a little bit more accurate with technology, or a lot of it more accurate. Um, it's good to know how to do things by hand so you know how things work, um, but technology is a great resource you guys have available to you as students of the 21st century. So bring questions to class and have a great night.